Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyabadi Paschachyadi Satarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayeva Cha Patita Nam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading Krishna book and we're on this very powerful chapter where a message is being delivered from Krishna to the gopis of Vrindavan. So Uddhava had been given the task to bring the message from Krishna to give to the gopis. And Uddhava decided that it would be better for him to read it himself to the gopis rather than give it to them. He himself read it out to the gopis. Uddhava is uh, highly intelligent and he's like the secretary of Lord Krishna and he's also a disciple, he's a disciple of Brihaspati. And Brihaspati is the guru of the demigods. So demigods are always very intelligent people. So Uddhava was reading the message to the gopis and he told them, first of all, how Lord Krishna told them that it's impossible for us to be separated from each other. He said, because I am I'm everywhere. Yes, Krishna is everywhere in everything. So he's wherever the gopis are, he's in their hearts and he's outside their hearts, he's everywhere. So he's with them. Of course, this, this kind of knowledge is not very meaningful to the gopis. The gopis are attached to the personal form of Krishna. They're not attached to the impersonal feature of Krishna. You, you, you cannot have a loving relationship with the impersonal feature of Krishna. But the gopis, they want the personal relationship. They're attached to Krishna as a person. They're not attached to his energies. They're attached to Krishna, the person. Hmm. All right, so we're hearing uh, this from the Krishna book. So Prabhupada has written that love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness 
is therefore the perfection of real knowledge. So it's a perfection of knowledge in understanding things in reality as they are. Our mind can never be vacant, it can never be empty. There will always be some kind of thought coming in the mind. And whatever we're thinking, it will be concerned with the eight elements of the material energy. We're always thinking about the material world. So we think about the, the different objects of this material world. Some are gross physical objects and some things are subtle. So somebody who understands the nature of the mind and these thoughts, then this person is actually a wise person. And this kind of person will surrender unto Krishna. There's a, there's a verse like that in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. So the gopis, they represent this perfect stage of knowledge. The gopis are not just some mental speculators. Their minds are always on Krishna, thinking about Krishna. We should understand that the mind is the energy of Krishna. Mm -hmm. All the different elements of the material nature are all Krishna's energy. And so the mind is one of the eight elements, so that's also the energy of Krishna. So anybody who can who is able to think and to feel for something and to will to want to get something very strongly, then they cannot be separated from Krishna. Right? The, the, there's different stages of the mind, how the mind becomes attached to something. There's three stages. The first stage is called where we think about something. So the gopis are thinking about Krishna. Uh, 
And then the next stage, after thinking about something or someone for a long time, then you start to have feelings for them. So, so gopis also have feelings for Krishna. And when that when that attachment is so so strong, it's more than feeling. We we come to the point willing where we have to we have to get something. We have to be with Krishna. But Prabhupada explains that when we come, when we can understand our eternal relationship with Krishna, then that is called Krishna consciousness. And the disease condition is where we cannot understand our relationship with Krishna. So when we cannot understand our relationship with Krishna, that's the stage of Maya, that's the contaminated stage. But the gopis are on the they're always in pure transcendental knowledge. So their minds are always Krishna conscious. Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like there's no separation, there's no separation between fire and air. You cannot have fire where there's no air. There has to be air before you can have a fire. So in the same way, there is no separation between Krishna and the living entities. When the living when the living entities forget Krishna, then they're not in their healthy or normal condition. But the gopis, they're always thinking of Krishna. So they're on the absolute stage of perfection and knowledge. The, and the people who are philosophers, speculators, they sometimes think that the path of devotion is just for less intelligent people. Because they, they see devotees singing and dancing, so they think we're just sentimental, we don't have any knowledge, we're not intelligent. Mm. Just like 500 years ago, Lord Chaitanya was chanting and people thought he was just a sentimentalist. 
หมือนกันเมื่อห้าร้อยปีที่แล้วเนี่ยพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาสวดมนต์แล้วก็เต้นรำคนบางคนเขาก็จะคิดว่าอ๋อพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นบ้าไปแล้ว But we should know that these people who say we are less intelligent, we say they are less intelligent. Because whatever knowledge these people have, it's not perfect. Because they have not become, they've not, they don't do bhakti. They don't know bhakti, so their knowledge is not perfect. So when we forget our eternal relationship with Krishna, that's when there's separation from Krishna. เมื่อเราเนี่ยลืมความสัมพันธ์ระหว่างเรากับพระเจ้าเนี่ยตอนนั้นมันทําให้มันทําให้ความทั้งเพินของเรากับพระเจ้าเนี่ยเกิดขึ้น But this is actually illusion because there's no separation แต่นี้เนี่ยถือว่าเป็นความหลงเพราะว่าแท้ที่จริงแล้วเนี่ยมันไม่มีความทั้งเพินระหว่างดวงเนี่ยสิ่งมีชีวิตกับพระเจ้า So the the gopis they were not in that illusion. They were not in any illusion about life. So there was no separation. For, there was the gopis could not be separated from Krishna. So Uddhava continues to read the message from Krishna. And so Krishna is written, nothing is separate from me. The whole cosmic manifestation is resting on me. And it's not separate from Krishna. And before the creation, Krishna says, "I was existing." So this is in the Vedic literature, in the scriptures, the Vedas. It's also written like that. Eko Narayana Asin na Brahma na Ishanaha. Before creation, there was only Narayan. There was no Brahma and no Shiva. The whole cosmic world is manipulated; is under the control by the three modes of material nature. So Brahma. Is the incarnation of passion, and he created. He did the secondary part. He created the secondary part of the creation. The, the first part is done by Vishnu. The secondary part is done by Brahma. So, Prabhupada said, "This is also confirmed by Shankaracharya." Shankaracharya said, "Narayana parovyaktat." That Lord Narayan, Lord Narayan is means also Lord Vishnu, is transcendental beyond this cosmic creation. 
ลาร้ายนะก็หมายถึงพระวิษณุองค์เดียวกันเราบอกว่าท่านทรงเป็นพระเจ้าองค์แรก So nothing in the in the world is separate from Krishna. But Krishna is not visible in everything. So this this is one of the mysteries of Krishna. He's everywhere and he's in everything, but he's not visible. So Krishna creates and he maintains, and then he annihilates the whole material world. And Krishna does this by expanding himself in different incarnations. Everything is Krishna. Everything depends on Krishna. But Krishna is not seen in the material energy. So that's why it's called Maya or illusion. Uh, in the spiritual energy, Krishna can be seen at every step and every circumstance. So this kind of understanding, this is seen by the gopis. So although Krishna is above the cosmic manifestation, he is completely. Uh, although Krishna, although Krishna, Krishna is always above the cos, Krishna is always above the cosmic manifestation. And that cosmic manifestation is fully dependent on Krishna. And a living, the living entity is also a love. He is also aloof from the material life, from the material world. Because the living entity is a spirit soul, but he has a material body, and the material body depends on the material world. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it is described how the material world is accepted as the mother of all living entities. And Krishna is the father. Just like the father puts the seed into the mother. So the father, the seed is containing the living entity, and the father puts that into the womb of the mother. So in the same way, Krishna puts all the living entities into the womb of the material nature. Krishna, 
ให้กับลูกโลกวัตถุที่เป็นไปให้กับธรรมชาติวัตถุนางก็เป็นแม่ And they come out in different bodies according to their different activities. But in every situation, the living entity is above the material conditioned life. สิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยอยู่เหนืออยู่เหนือพลังงานวัตถุอยู่ดี So Prabhupada said, just like if we study our own bodies, we can understand how the living entity is aloof from the body. พระพุทธเจ้าบอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราศึกษาเกี่ยวกับร่างกายนี้ดีๆเราจะรู้ได้เลยว่าความจริงสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยอยู่เหนือร่างวัตถุนี้อย่างไร All the actions of the body take place by the interactions of the modes of nature. ทุกร่างเนี่ยทุกร่างเนี่ยจะได้มาจากการที่เขาเนี่ยจากปฏิกิริยาที่เขามีต่อธรรมชาติวัตถุ And we can see how The changes are taking place in our body every moment, all the time. But the spirit soul doesn't get affected. It's above all this. Is and the spirit soul doesn't change. Just the body changes. So we cannot create and we cannot destroy any of the actions of the material nature. We are we are trapped by the material body. And in material life, we have three different conditions. One is awake, one is asleep, and the other is unconscious. So. In all these three conditions, the mind will still be acting. And the living entity, both he may be sleeping or dreaming, but he sees, uh, he he's, he he sees something, and he sees it as real. Although it may be dreaming. In his dream, he's thinking it's real, but it's not real. It's just the illusion. And when we're awake, we see the same thing, and we see it's not real. So sometimes, it's in, in, according to our consciousness, sometimes we will accept something is real and something is not real. And it could be the same thing, but because we're sleeping, we're thinking it's real, and because we're not sleeping, we're thinking it's not real. So people who do philosoph uh, who like to speculate on philosophy. Or who do sankhya yoga, they will talk about these things. 
พราะฉะนั้นใครที่ชอบเกี่ยวกับในแนวทางของปรัชญาหรือว่าชอบสนใจเกี่ยวกับสังเคโยคะเนี่ยเขาก็จะคุยเกี่ยวกับเรื่องนี้ so the s a n k y a yogis they will do great austerities and uh, penances to try to get the conclusion They will practice controlling the senses and doing renunciation to try to come to the conclusion. So all these different methods. Of trying to understand the goal of life, they're all like different rivers, and Krishna is like the ocean. No, Krishna is the ocean. And the rivers flow down to the ocean. So when people are trying to get more knowledge, they're actually flowing toward Krishna. And so after many births, they try for many lifetimes, and finally they may come to Krishna. That's perfection. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in the twelfth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "Klesho dekatarasthe sham avyakta sakta cheta sam." Krishna said, "People are on the path; they're trying to understand me." But if people try to come to me without any bhakti, they'll find it very difficult. It will be a lot of trouble. So Krishna cannot be understood unless you come to bhakti. You have to come by bhakti to understand Krishna. So there are three paths in the Bhagavad Gita. There's karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga. So if someone's very attached to the results. Then they have to do actions which will bring them. They'll have to do actions which will bring them to bhakti. And people who are very addicted to philosophical speculation. They should also act in a way that they will come to bhakti. So karma yoga is different from ordinary karma. And jnana yoga is also not the same as ordinary jnana. So in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 
Krishna says that only by devotion can we come to understand Krishna. And so the go the gopis they achieved this perfectional stage of devotion. The, the gopis were not big scholars or philosophers. They didn't want to know anything. All they wanted to know was Krishna. So in the Vedas it says, simply by knowing Krishna, we automatically get all the other knowledge. If one knows if one knows Krishna, then he knows everything you need to know. And if one doesn't know Krishna, it doesn't matter what you know, it's not it's not useful, it's not perfect. So Uddhava keeps reading Krishna's letter. And he said, Transcendental knowledge of the Absolute is no longer necessary for you gopis. Krishna tells the gopis, I know you were used to loving me from the very beginning of your life. Knowledge of the Absolute Truth is, is actually meant for persons who want liberation. But if somebody loves Krishna, if they have love for Krishna, then they're already liberated. This is said in the Bhagavad Gita. Anyone who is doing devotional service is on the transcendental platform. So the gopis, they didn't feel any pain of material existence. But they felt the pain of separation from Krishna. So Krishna told the gopis, that I have separated myself from you just to increase your love for me. Now, because I am away from you, you will be thinking, you're meditating on me more. So the gopis, they're in the highest level of meditation. 
อยู่ในระดับการทำสมาธิที่สูงสุดโยกิส don't do much devotional service พวกโยกีเนี่ยจะไม่ค่อยได้ทำการอภิตนเสียสารับใช้มากนะ What they like to yogis they just want to meditate พวกโยกีเนี่ยจะชอบการทำสมาธิ But they don't know that the perfection of the yoga meditation is devotion เขาหารู้ไหมว่าความจริงเนี่ยจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดของการทำสมาธิคือการได้มาปฏิบัติการอภิตนเสียสารับใช้ So, so the gopis constantly meditating on Krishna is the topmost yoga. And Krishna knows about the nature of women. When a woman has a lover, and the lover is away from her, then she'll think of him more in in meditation than when he's present before her. So Krishna wanted to teach the common people by the te- by his teachings to the gopis. If somebody is always in trance, like the gopis, then He will, be, he will certainly get the lotus feet of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya taught people to follow in the footsteps of the gopis by doing vipralamba seva or service in separation. And the six Goswamis also did this worship of Krishna in the same way. Uh, they were always serving Krishna in the mood of the gopis in separation from Krishna. So there, there's there's a song, the Goswami Astikam, eight verses which describe the activities of the Goswamis. จะมีบทเพลงอยู่บทหนึ่งที่จะร้องเกี่ยวกับกิจกรรมของพวกโกสวามีสรีนิวาสอาจารย์เนี่ยท่านได้เขียนบทเพลงนี้เกี่ยวกับโกสวามีทั้งหกท่าน And he described all the activities of the g o s w a m i s แต่ทางการอธิบายเกี่ยวกับกิจกรรมที่เราโกสวามีเนี่ยทำกัน He says the Goswamis were always absorbed in the ocean of transcendental feelings in the mood of the gopis. ท่านได้อธิบายบอกว่าโกสวามีเนี่ยพวกท่านจะอยู่ในมหาสมุทรแห่งความรักในอารมณ์ของความหังเหินจากพิชนาเหมือนกับพวกโกปิ And they used they used to live in Vrindavan and they would Look for Krishna, and they would cry, "Oh, Krishna, where are you? Where are you, Krishna?" Oh, Krishna, 
And where are you, Srimati Radharani? But they never said, they would never say, we have seen, now we have seen Radha and Krishna. And they never said, because we have seen Radha and Krishna, so our mission is successful. And their mission always remained incomplete, wasn't there? It was not fulfilled. And they never met Radha and Krishna. But they were always in the ocean of love of Krishna. So Krishna, he reminded the gopis about the time of the rasa dance. When Krishna called the gopis to come for rasa dance, some of the gopis couldn't come. And because they couldn't come, because they were stopped by their family or their husbands from coming, so they, they, would just, they just died. They gave up their bodies, thinking of Krishna. So if we can be absorbed in thinking of Krishna and feeling separation, this is the quickest way to get the, to come to the lotus feet of Krishna. So the gopis were they were very convinced about the the, the feeling of separation from Krishna. So they used to worship Krishna in this way. And so they felt good to know that Krishna was always with them. So the gopis were very happy with Uddhava and they began to talk to Uddhava after he would read the message to them. So the gopis said to Uddhava, we heard that King Kamsa that uh, is now being killed. He was always a lot of trouble for the mem people of the Yadu dynasty. So Gopi said to Uddhava, this is very good news for us. So we hope all the people of the Yadu dynasty are very happy in the company of Krishna. Krishna can fulfill all the desires of his devotees. So the gopis asked Uddhava, does Krishna sometimes think of us? 
แล้วก็พวกอุปีก็ถามกับพวกอุดรบอกว่าคริสนาเนี่ยคิดถึงพวกเราบ้างไหม We know sometimes he'll be with these girls or ladies from the high society in Mathura. So does he think of us when he's with them? We know that the women and the girls in Mathura, they're not like us village women. They are more enlightened than us, and maybe even more beautiful than us. And the way they smile and look, all their feminine features must be very pleasing to Krishna. We know Krishna always likes beautiful women. So, I think Krishna must have been caught by all these women of Mathura. So gopis asked Tudava, "Will you kindly tell us if Krishna sometimes remembers us when he's with all these women?" And then another gopi said, "He said, 'Does Krishna remember that night?'" When we were in the midst of Kadamba flowers and in the moonlight, that night when Vrindavan is very very beautiful. Krishna was dancing with us, and the atmosphere was full of spiritual energy. And there was, we could hear the sound of all the foot bells. We were having, we were talking with Krishna a very pleasing manner. So does he remember that night? We remember that night, and we feel separation. Separation from Krishna makes us agitated. It's like there's a fire in our body. Krishna should come back to Vrindavan. He should put out that fire. Just like a cloud appears in the sky, it puts out the forest fire when it pours down rain. So then another gopi said, "Krishna has killed his enemies." Another gopi said, "Krishna has killed his enemies." 
and he, he achieved the kingdom of Kamsa. Maybe, maybe he's married now with the king's daughter. And he'll be living happily with all of his friends and countrymen, family men. Why will he come to this village, Vrindavan? Why will he come back to our village? Then another gopi said, Krishna is the husband of the goddess of fortune. And he is self-sufficient. So he has, he's not much interested, he has no business with us. We're just the girls in the Vrindavan forest. But he has also no business with the city girls in Mathura. They're also not important for him. He is the super soul. He has nothing to do with any of us, here or there. Okay, so we'll stop here. Are there any questions today? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, first question from Shaya Mansi. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanavatanam, this accept my humble obeisances, or Kori Susira Prabhupada. Kamtham Bongi Nakhajana. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเหมือนกับว่าถ้าเราพัฒนาความคิดถึงกิจชาติเหมือนอารมณ์เดียวกับพวกโกปีอะค่ะแล้วเอ่อเท่าที่เรารู้ม
แต่ว่าเราเนี่ยจะต้องเริ่มจากการปฏิบัติตามระเบียบข้อบังคับต่างๆ Gradually we can come to that level แต่จากการที่เราปฏิบัติตามกฎระเบียบไปเรื่อยๆเนี่ยมันก็จะทำให้เราค่อยๆพัฒนาตนเองมาถึงระดับหนึ่งได้ So we have to go step by step เราต้องค่อยๆพัฒนาไปเป็นสเต็ปสเต็ปไป We have to begin hearing and chanting. We have to take shelter of spiritual teacher, take initiation. They have to remove all the anattas from the heart, purify the heart. We have to take shelter of spiritual teacher, take initiation. They have to remove all the anattas from the heart, purify the heart. We have to take shelter of spiritual teacher, take initiation. They have to remove all the anattas from the heart, purify the heart. We cannot just jump up to the topmost level of the gopis. But gradually, we can come to that stage. The mood of the gopis is internal, not external. เพราะว่าอารมณ์ของพวกโกปีเนี่ยมันเป็นอารมณ์จากภายในมันไม่ใช่จากภายนอก So you could you could internally you can cultivate that mood of the gopis เพราะฉะนั้นภายในเนี่ยเราสามารถพัฒนาพัฒนาอารมณ์แบบนี้เนี่ยในภายในของเราได้ But externally you should strictly follow all the rules and regulations แต่ว่าภายนอกเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะปฏิบัติตามกฎระเบียบทุกทุกข้ออย่างจริงจัง You should think I'm a neophyte devotee. I don't know anything. เราสามารถคิดได้ว่าฉันเนี่ยเป็นสาวกคนใหม่ยังยังไม่รู้เรื่องอะไรเลย But within your heart, you should be thinking. About the gopis and how much they love Krishna and how they feel separation from Krishna. That should be a very personal thing, very private thing. You don't tell anybody. มันควรเป็นความรู้สึกที่มันควรเป็นสิ่งที่เป็นความลับเราไม่ควรที่จะไปบอกใครอะไร But externally you want to be a very strict devotee แต่ว่าภายนอกคือเราจะต้องเป็นสาวกที่จริงจังมาก Carefully chanting and hearing แล้วมีความระมัดระวังในการสวดมนต์แล้วก็การอ่านการฟัง Understand, Shaya? Pramani, Hari Shaya. Hari Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes, I understand, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your explanation. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Next question from Yuna Madhuri. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Guru Shishila Prabhupada. In personalists also want spiritual development. They also engage into spiritual practice, different practice. But they are not attracted to Lord Krishna, to Supreme Lord. And what is wrong in their mood? In which case? Well, they don't have the mood of devotion, devotion to Krishna. That they don't have that mood of devotion. That's what's wrong in their case. They have no devotion, no feeling for Krishna. Mm. เพื่อเข้าใจถึงสัจธรรมเนี่ยมันต่างจากการอุทิศตนจะรับใช้หรือว่าการที่เขาจะรู้เข้าถึงกฤษณะได้อย่างไรนะครับบุญมาตอบว่าสิ่งที่พวกเขาไม่มีหรือว่าสิ่งที่พวกเขาทํา
และที่มันขาดไปเนี่ยก็คือการอุทิศตนต่อกริชนาหรือพวกเราจะไม่มีการแนะนำหรือไม่มีการปฏิบัติการอุทิศตนต่อกริชนา Their motive is just simply to merge, to become one, to get into the one, enter into the Brahma j o y t i become one. They don't have the mood of giving, of doing any devotion, of surrender. เขาไม่มีอารมณ์แห่งการมาปฏิบัติการวิจารณ์เสียสารับใช้หรือว่าการสิโนลาบต่อ But they talk about it. They talk about bhakti. And they talk about surrender, but it's not real because they're just they're they're so much covered by the impersonal teaching. But they will have a conversation. And, and if you ask them about Krishna, they say, "Well, we believe in Krishna, but we say, but they will say, but Krishna is just uh, he is only a form of the Brahman. He comes from the Brahman. It's the Brahman which is supreme." So they don't have the real. They don't have the real devotion towards Krishna. There should be the devotion, the devotee, and the object of the devotion, and the process of devotion. But their thinking is ultimately Krishna is just coming from the Brahman, and Krishna is not eternal, and Krishna is just uh, a manifestation of the Brahman in this world. So that's a great insult to Krishna. And the Lord Chaitanya used to say that the Mayavadis are offensive; they're the greatest offenders to Krishna. Because they're not recognizing Krishna as the supreme Lord. They're saying it's all one. They're saying, "Me, I, you, Krishna, me, we're all one. We're all the same." You understand? You know. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. I understand. Maybe impersonalists uh, haven't humility; they have proud. Yes, that's also there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It takes humility to surrender. It takes humility even to accept a spiritual master. To submit herself to a teacher takes humility. So the impersonalists, they also have teachers. They have spiritual teachers. You know, they also have to surrender to their guru. So that takes some humility. But they don't ultimately accept Krishna as the supreme. They don't believe in any supreme personality behind the universe. มาดีก็เพิ่มเติมขึ้นมาบอกว่าอาจจะเป็นเพราะพวกเขาเนี่ยขาดการอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนนะบุญมาก็บอกว่าใช่อันนั้นเราก็สามารถบอกได้ในการที่จะยอมรับพระคุณนะทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดของเจ้าเนี่ยคือจะต้องมีความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนยอมจำนนศิโลลาภตนเองตรงนี้แล้วก็ในการยอมรับพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ก็ต้องมีคุณสมบัตินี้เหมือนกันอาจจะพวกที่เป็นมายาวดีพวกนี้เขาอาจจะมีพระอาจารย์ทิพย์เหมือนกันเขาก็จะรับใช้พระอาจารย์ทิพย์ของเขาแต่ว่าใน
แต่ว่ามันก็เขาก็จะยังไม่ไม่แบบว่ายอมรับพระเจ้า So they say Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. They say only the Brahman is truth and the material world is all false. So they don't accept the reality of the material world. But we say the Brahman is true, and the material world is also true. It's temporary, but it's true. It exists. It's not illusion. But that's what they say. So there's always there's always a lot of discussion between the Vaishnavas and the Mayavadis, the Dwaitis. They they have a very different understanding from us. They they don't believe in the Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. They just simply say only Brahman. So they don't accept also like Atman, Paramatma. They just say one. There's only one soul. They don't. They don't accept that there are two souls in the heart. They just say one. They're known as Advaitas, Advaitavadis. They just say oneness. Everything is one. There's only one soul, and that one soul is God. So we're all God. You're God, and I'm God. We're all. We're all God. <laughs> But we say no, not one soul, two souls. There's the supreme soul, and then there's the individual soul. And, and we say there's also Bhagavan, there's also Krishna, the person who is above everything. But they say, oh, it's, no, it's all one, Vishnu, Brahma, Shiva, everybody is one, and you're also one, we're all one, we're all God. So there are different teachings. We're very careful, we don't like to associate with these Mayabadi or these impersonalist people because they are, they are against devotional service. Okay. There is one more question, Ramash. Okay. From Vaishnavi Mataji. Sorry, Mataji, you are mute. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, 
we were reading that mind is one of the energies of Krishna. Uh, so I was thinking whether we have a mind in our spiritual body also. And then uh, uh, I like um, I'm just trying to engage my mind in the daytime uh, uh, here in the lectures, in chanting, in cooking, like something like that. But in the night when the, when I sleep, I'm getting some dreams which are not Krishna consciousness, Krishna conscious. So how, how should I understand? Like uh, still uh, the mind is very much contaminated. Is it like that, Guru Maharaj? Yes. You un have to understand, it will take some time, you have to continue your practice. Remember, you've been in the material world for many lifetimes, and recently only you've come to Krishna consciousness. So it will take some time to purify the mind. But the more we become absorbed in hearing and chanting, then actually your dreams, you will start to dream also about Krishna. Mm. คำถามมาดีนะคะถามว่าเอ่อตอนนี้เนี่ยในเอ่อพูดถึงในจิตใจเนี่ยเวลาเราทําทำไมถึงเป็นเช่นนี้เป็นเพราะว่าจิตใจยังเอ่อพัฒนาการอยู่ในโลกวัตถุนี้อยู่หรือเปล่านะก็มาก็บอกว่าใช่นะเพราะว
I keep on reminding myself that no, it's unsatisfactory. And there are times when while chanting Gurudev, no matter how much we try, we even I even talk to my mind and explain to it how important it is to listen to the name of the Lord and Radharani. But again, after a couple of seconds, again, the mind starts drifting. And then there are moments that I will tell my mind, okay, you can do your job. I will continue to chant. At least the Lord in my heart can hear that I'm calling out to him. Although you are not allowing me to pay attention to his name, but he knows I'm calling out to him. I'm not going to give up. And I continue chanting Gurudev. Is that an all right attitude, Gurudev? I mean, I cannot concentratively hear, but at the same time, I know it's a mind being a culprit. Although I'm talking to it and telling it again and again, but still there are times this happens. So I just tell my mind, I'm just going to continue chanting. Yes. Okay. Yes, of course. Wherever, wherever the mind wanders, you have to bring it back. You don't let it stay. You know, the mind wanders away. It's not like you leave the mind to wander away. You must bring it back. The mind wanders yeah. away from Krishna. We bring it back. Yeah. Okay, and if it wanders a bit again, again, I bring it back. Yeah. And then it continues to wander, but it doesn't matter. I still continue chanting, even if it wanders. That's okay, right? You keep bringing the mind back. Bring the mind back. Don't allow the mind mm -hmm. to remain away from Krishna. Hmm. There are times where they, that's why I'm just a bit, you know, frustrated at times. I keep on bringing it back so many times. And it still doesn't stop drifting away. Mm -hmm. And then I just tell my mind, all right, I give up conquering you or trying to bring you back every time. Finally, Lord Krishna is your controller. At least he can hear me calling out to him. Although you're not allowing me to concentrate to hear him, but he knows I'm still calling out to him with all my heart. Uh, that is what I do for it because I really get even tired of calling the mind back and I get tired of even talking to my own mind, telling it again and again and again, more than five or six times. And I continue with the chanting. Well, that's your way. That's not the proper way. The proper way is to bring it back. Okay. So, all right, Gurudev. Okay. I'll continue doing that then. Mm. All right, good. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Antaranga Prabhu has a question. Antaranga Gopal. Yes. Has a comment or question? Uh, yes, my eyes. Please accept my humble obeisances. All right, Shubhakar. Thank you for the wonderful class. Um, my question uh, was like, you know, normally when you hear the Krishna's pastime, the gopis are remembering the Lord. So much on the consciousness is so much focus, right? Like, you know, the devotion, the consciousness part is very much stressed. But when we, uh, when we, when we are doing some, uh, you know, like maybe preaching activities or taking care of a temple or center, this preaching activities and the results become so much focused, you know, we have to somehow, you know, we have, we have pushed to get some results and things like that. And then the devotion gets, you know, when you reflect back, then you realize that, you know, oh, I, I just missed it or, you know, it doesn't become so much of a focus. So how to, how to have that uh, balance and not go off track <laughs> and, you know, be, be, be after the result or, you know, things like that organization. You know, we also need that, but, you know, how to not just be uh, swamped by that? Well, we have to be regularly hearing the teachings and cultivating attachment to Krishna and remembering Krishna's teaching, you know, not to be attached to the results but to be attached to the duty, that we do our duty and depend on Krishna for the results. So it's important for us to hear these philosophical points so that we don't become overly attached to the results. 
อาจารย์อาจารย์บอกว่าเอ่อเวลาเราฟังเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวของพวกปุปปีกับคริสต์เนี่ยเราก็จะมันเป็นเอ่อเอ่อเริ่มไม่ไม่ยึดติดกับคนของการที่เราเนี่ยกระทําในคนของการที่เราเนี่ยปฏิบัติก็กระทําไปโดยที่ไม่ไม่ได้หวังผลไม่ we have to endeavor but at the same time we depend on krishna ultimately we're servants of krishna and krishna is the, you know he gives he gives the, the results according to our qualification so Sometimes we may get good results, sometimes not. We just, but we just have to do our duty and depend on Krishna. What does Krishna want? What's Krishna's plan? Of course, we like to see everything very nice, try to do the best we can. So we do our best, but at the same time we have to depend on Krishna. And when if we get good results, then we give the credit to Guru and Krishna. We don't take the credit's not for us, but the credit's for Guru and Krishna, it's their mercy. And if the, the result is bad, then it's our fault. Then we have to be ready to take the blame. That's how it works. Thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Okay, so thank you very much, Archana. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the you. for the translation. We thank all the devotees for listening and participation. So we. We'll and remember Monday and Friday Monday and Friday night we're doing Ishopanishad. So any of you have time, you please join us on the same Zoom line Zoom platform at the same time, Monday and Friday. And we're going through the Ishopanishad. So thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Go back to Prabhupada. the room.